Now, like Gorbachev, Biden is very much a product of his family history, but one we know little about. Investigative reporter Adam Entaus has looked into the president's ancestors in a piece for The New Yorker magazine, and he told our Michelle Martin what shaped the man in the Oval Office. Adam Entaus, thanks so much for joining us. Great to be here. So, you know, I, Adam, honestly, this is one of my favorite kinds of stories, which I call hiding in plain sight. I mean, meaning that Joe Biden's been in public life for decades. And I think it's fair to say we didn't know any of this. You describe it uh, as a rags to riches to rags story, which is kind of something that the president has alluded to when he's talked about his his origins. You know, not that he does so very often, but when he wrote about it in his book, you know, promises to keep. How so? Like in a nutshell, how yeah. is it a rags to riches to rags story? Like what what happened? Yeah. So basically, his, his uh, Joe Biden's father is uh, is is uh, you know his family's not rich, but they are connected to a family through marriage that is rich. The Sheens. They they get rich initially as war contractors in World War One, uh, and then at, between the wars they're in the grave vault business and they make a fortune making grave vaults and selling those in Baltimore and Washington. And then during World War Two they make a far bigger fortune as war contractors, right? And then and then Joe Biden and Richard Ben Kramer in their books don't really explain what happens. They just say the money, the war ended, and the money was gone. And then uh, the family ended up in Scranton uh, without any money. And uh, and that's the beginning of the story that we all know of Joe Biden sort of growing up, not poor, but uh, n not wealthy, sort of lower middle class, if you will, in terms of income and and sort of the beginning of his climb back. I don't know if we want to call it riches, but uh, certainly to uh, to fame and and uh, and uh, gr greatness in terms of uh, politics. The Sheens, like what role did they play in the life of the Bidens? And why is like what happened to them so critical to these this kind of, I don't know, head spinning turns of fortune, if we if we can call it that. So what you had is these two families are coming together through marriage. They're these two sisters, the Robinette sisters. The Robinettes are a prominent family in Baltimore. They perceive themselves as kind of English aristocrats. Um, these two sisters, one of them marries uh, Joe Biden, jo Joseph Harry Biden, which is the president's uh, uh, grandfather. And the other one marries Bill Sheen uh, Sr., who's from Boston. And the Sheens also believe that they are a prominent aristocratic family, right, uh, with English roots. And so, you know, basically these two families are sort of joined through marriage. The Bidens are sort of the lesser uh, in terms of stature, in terms of finance, they are kind of, uh, you know, you, I would say that Joseph Harry Biden married up when he marries, uh, you know, into the into the Robinette and Sheen families. And the idea is, is that, uh, you know, they're going to rise uh, together. Right. And uh, but the Bidens uh, move, they move uh, initially to Wilmington uh, and then later to Scranton uh, because J Joseph Harry Biden, the president's grandfather, worked for a company, Amico, an oil company, and he was moved around. And he was like a salary man, very loyal to this company. And he never really made a lot of money and he had a drinking problem. And uh, and so he struggled. They lost their house in, in Wilmington. But down in Baltimore, the Sheens were making it rich and they were living large. And the president's father had this double life. He at home, he didn't really have much. But when he was in Baltimore with his cousin and his best friend, Bill Sheen Jr., the son of Bill Sheen Sr., the patriarch of the family, he, uh, you know, has the best polo ponies. He's, you know, driving the fanciest cars. They have private airplanes. You know, they have uh, estates that they go and, and stay at. And so you have, you know, uh, Biden's father is sort of has uh, kind of uh, you know, becomes, uh, you know, kind of uh, something of an aristocrat himself. And so, you know, basically the Bidens were kind of riding off the, uh, you know, on the coattails of this better off family. And they did that until basically everything falls apart. Why does it all fall apart? Yeah. So that was like the challenge. OK, Biden and his book and Richard Ben Kramer just say it falls apart. They don't say how mm -hmm. or why. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was curious, why does it fall apart? Right. And uh, Bill Sheen, the third, this is the living guy that I find from that family. He tells me that his mother 
would refer to the World War II business as blood money. Mm. And I didn't really understand what she meant. And either did mm. he. He just knew that she thought there was something inappropriate about the business. Right. And then he told me that his dad would tell him that for years the IRS would follow him. And I was again like, okay, these are, these are breadcrumbs, right? So I, what I start to do is I go to the Maryland State Archive and they have these books, which include IRS liens, tax liens. And I look for the sheens in this book and I find the tax liens, right, initially. And so I can see that the IRS was chasing after them. Right. And then what I do is I, I go to the National Archive in uh, in uh, College Park, Maryland, outside of Washington, and I'm trying to figure out what actually happened. Why blood money? You know, and uh -huh. so what I find is that they were getting these big contracts from the U.S., the United States Maritime Commission. And I look at the chart and it's basically for companies that were found to have taken what they referred to as excessive profits. And this was something Roosevelt was hot and heavy over. He gives speeches of it long before the war. Basically, it's a remnant from what happened in World War One, where there was just the backlash. These people were lining their profits pockets. Excuse me. If you look at that chart. It they, they it's supposed to be around eight to ten percent, right? And I noticed when I looked at that chart that that particular company had like a forty eight percent profit. And so, so then I I was like, okay, all right, now I know uh, why they were profit. So so they were accused of profiteering. Were they punished for that? Is that what kind of made the whole thing fall apart? Yeah, they were punished for that. And basically, they're it's you know sixty you know they they had to. Re pay two two thirds of their uh, of their of what they what they took. And so what I can see now that I found that was that uh, basically the family was scrambling. The Sheens in particular were scrambling to basically repay this money. They had bought all these estates and I was able to find, uh, you know, in property records, these mansions. I mean, we're talking we're not talking about mm -hmm. small mansions here. The, the one that they owned in Old Westbury was something out of Downton Abbey. But is there any evidence that Joe Biden's father was directly complicit in this conduct or was he sort of a collateral damage? Um, honestly, I don't know. Um, it, certainly, he's not named as uh, as a party that I at least that I was able to find where the government is coming after him. I see the government coming after the Sheens. Right. Mm -hmm. I do not see the government coming after Joe Biden senior. Um, but the implications are clear, which is that uh, once the Sheens basically had to give up everything they had, um, there was, you know, Joe Biden, as he writes in his book, you know, he had basically nowhere else to go. And then the Bidens have to move to Scranton and start from scratch, right, with menial work, uh, you know, and, you know, fixing boilers and and uh, selling pennants at uh, flea markets. Right. OK, so, you know, the other thing that you point out is the alcoholism, obviously, is a is a through line. I mean, the president is not shy about talking about the fact that he doesn't drink and he he really encouraged his siblings not to drink and he encouraged his kids not to drink. And, you know, we know how some of this turned out. We know that one of his sons has a very, you know, difficult time with substance abuse. And we know that, the, you know, Bo, his son who who um, died from a, a form of brain cancer, did not. And so this is kind of a through line, you know, through the family. It just, did he know uh, about the travails that his family had had because of alcohol? Is that, you know, part of why he feels so strongly about it? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, so th this is, again, something that is shared between the Bidens and the Sheens, right? Both of these families have the same problem, which is which is like, uh, you know, clearly inherited alcoholism, right? Particularly on the male side. And, you know, um, you know, I think that's in, in, in some way that's that's, again, where Gene, uh, the president's uh, the president's mother sort of plays this very important role in, uh, you know, distancing uh, so after everything goes south uh, at the end of World War II, right, and the, the years from following where the government's coming after the Sheens, they blame uh, th a lot of these problems on alcoholism. But basically, the lesson uh, that comes out of this experience, the one that the Bidens grow up uh, believing and hearing, is not about the impropriety uh, that befall that is that is that uh, that is involved in the company going south, 
But the idea that um, that the Sheens drank the money uh, away, that they basically uh, that this opportunity that the Bidens and the Sheens had for uh, a, a life of security and wealth and prominence was uh, destroyed because of the weakness uh, of some members uh, who were drawn to drinking to excess. And so, um, you know, when Joe Biden is, you know, he makes this decision when he's young that he's just not going to drink, right? And I've never, uh, and he, uh, you know, he didn't, he wouldn't talk to me for the story, so I don't know. You know, I mean, he said, like you like you mentioned, that uh, that he, uh, you know, decided at a young age. I don't really understand, you know, exactly why he makes that decision. Like, um, is he you know, he's he's basically he's seen all of these relatives undone by alcoholism. Is mm-hmm. there- so you know what? You know what let, let, so let's take a step back for a minute, Adam. And then you've uncovered these fascinating details about the president's um, ancestors and their sort of journey to the American story. So I guess the question I have for you is that now that you've uncovered this and reflected on all this, what, what does it say to you? Is it, is it important? Does this matter? Well, I mean, uh, you know, obviously he's president, right? And, uh, and, and having an accurate history of the president's past, I do think is, uh, is, is in the public interest, obviously. Um, you know, I, I, obviously this was, I was writing a narrative Right. Uh, and so telling a story that, uh, frankly, um, had sort of been lost to history because, uh, you know, people sort of took for granted that the story that had been repeated over and over again, both within his family and then publicly when he introduces himself uh, as a presidential candidate, um, that the, the version that we were told was was incomplete. Right. Uh, very incomplete. And so providing an accurate, um, you know, an accurate version of that history that helps shed light into what what motivates and uh, what uh, you know what motivates uh, the the president and you know frankly uh, as 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 you know the the issues with Hunter Biden uh, played a uh, maybe not a, a, a decisive role in what happens in 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 2020 election and might have influence in the future election if his if if Joe Biden decides to seek a second term. Um, you know, understanding again how the the uh, I would almost call it a family curse, um, you know, of mm-hmm. alcoholism that ripples its way through the family. You know, uh, part of the exercise for me was talking to Hunter and, uh, you know, him thinking, I think that he was something of an outlier. Right. And um, and realizing like history just keeps on repeating itself. Your your piece, your piece ends, I, I have to say, on a very poignant no, I mean, we know what happened to the Biden side, right? The oldest becomes president of the United States, very much helped by his sister, Valerie, who has been a critical piece of his political campaigns. We know that his sons have had kind of a, have, and his daughter too, uh, with Jill, Ashley, have had some struggles of their own, which they've addressed. On the Sheen side, you know, which had lived so large. I mean, do, do you want to share what? Sure. What yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So like, you know, obviously I I, I found uh, the, the you know, Joe Biden's older cousin who uh, Bill Sheen III at an RV park in Florida. Um, after I went to the grave site and saw the correct spelling, I tracked them down. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, part of it, part of the reporting here was figuring I, I, I you know, I, I envisioned this story sort of as east of Eden, uh, you know, that kind of a that kind of a story. You have the Hamiltons and the Transks, right? Mm-hmm. And you had the Bidens and the Sheens, right? And so uh, I was curious, like, what happened to the Sheens? Right. And frankly, what happened mm-hmm. to the Sheens is very similar to what happens to the Bidens. Right. Which is they have no money after this um, and uh, and their alcoholism is just ripping them apart. Right. They're just being completely ravaged by alcoholism. And um, what happens is, is, is that the some, some of the Sheens uh, move to Wilmington and they actually live not far from where Joe Biden grew up. And occasionally they would bump into Joe Biden at the supermarket or at a restaurant or a bar. You know, they would they would see each other in Wilmington and the Sheens had this. They would walk away from these encounters, Mm. feeling that the Bidens wanted nothing to do with them. And there would be an interaction, according to uh, one of the one of the Sheens, Mm -hmm. where she would say, hey, uh, hey, Joe. Uh, when see Senator Biden, I'm Trudy Sheen, uh, you know, Bill the Third's uh, wife. 
And uh, and according to Trudy, uh, Joe Biden would respond by saying, I know who you are. And then that would be it. And there was this sense of coldness that uh, that 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 the Sheens uh, perceived. Right. Whether that was intentional or not, I don't know. But it was certainly perceived by the Sheens as this coldness. And so the basically what happened is, is the Sheens watched as the Bidens rose to prominence while they themselves found themselves, you know, ravaged again by alcoholism and poverty. And one side is rising. It's the opposite of what happens earlier. Right. Because it's the Sheens that bring the Bidens up. Uh, in the in, in the pre-war story and in the post-war story, it's the Bidens are uh, are rising and the Sheens are falling. And the Sheens, uh, you know, frankly, I think resent that uh, the Bidens didn't want to have a relationship with them anymore. Yeah. And, well, and, you know, and basically what happens is, is uh, Bill Sheen, the third dies um, and they can't they, they don't have the money to bury him at the cemetery. And um, and then uh, Bill Sheen, the third's uh, daughter, uh, Amy, has this quote that she she tells me, which is, uh, you know, I asked her, like, how do you sum up the story of the Bidens and the Sheens? And it was the it's the kicker, the last uh, quote mm-hmm. story. And she says something to the effect of, you know, uh, they ended up in the White House and we ended up in the trailer park. And so, uh, you know, mm-hmm. this is so th- that's the way I decided to end the piece with one family um, in the ashes and the other one at the pinnacle. Adam, I just thanks so much for talking with us about this. This is a fascinating report. All right. I really grateful to be here. Thank you.